It has either 12 kilowatt or 14 kilowatt of output. If you don't have an intelligent battery, you're going to lose a lot of money. What the customer doesn't want is the virtual power plant to interfere with the daily day-to-day -day operations of the battery. And the systems then need to react to these price signals. And if they do, then the customer actually makes more money than ever before. The smarter way to go solar. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and today we're coming to you from Inner Solar Europe. This is the largest solar conference in Europe, here in Munich, Germany. Uh, and by the way, uh, this morning joining me is Felix Dembski from Zonin. We're going to be looking at the new Zonin DC coupled hybrid inverter solution. So Felix, it's good to see you. Thanks for chatting with us this morning. Thanks for coming by. Absolutely. So tell us about the brand new DC coupled solution. Yeah, what you're looking here uh, at here is the new Sonnen hybrid system. Um, it's a DC coupled system. A typical German household will use this with uh, 12 kilowatts of um, power and typically 20 kilowatt hours, stackable even higher in terms of capacity. Um, most customers actually choose to use this um, uh, with backup power. So we've integrated all the backup power and island mode functionalities in there. So you have all the functionalities you need uh, for your typical self-consumption system. That's great. And I know, Felix, when we were talking off camera a moment ago, you mentioned that, you know, Germany has a very reliable electric grid as far as the numbers go. I think you said, what, 13 minutes per year downtime on average, 13 minutes or less? That's correct. I think it's the second most reliable grid in the world. I don't know which one's the first, but I don't feel that it's rather unreliable. It's perfect for 13 minutes. I've never had an outage uh, in my life. Okay. Now, you did mention, though, that since the war in Ukraine started, that more Germans have been demanding emergency backup power. And I know a lot of our audience, one of the big reasons they look into solar and battery storage is because, not just for a saving money, but they want emergency backup and energy security. And you said that that's, that's becoming more popular now here in Germany. That's correct. In, uh, in Germany, historically, backup power wasn't such a big feature. We've offered it, but from the numbers, because it was optional, we could see that Typically, people relied on the grid first and foremost, and that has changed completely since the Ukraine crisis. Since then, the demand went up to typically 50% of people requesting backup power and then go for full island mode. So backup power typically means that you can just drain the battery once, so you can you know, go through one outage, but when it's empty, it's empty. But people now request the full island mode so they can recharge again and again and again until the grid comes back. Um, and typically, so half of the customers requ uh, request uh, the backup power mode, and then almost all of those uh, request the full island mode. So we've integrated that into that uh, system, so it comes with full backup island mode power uh, every time. Okay, so let's run through the technical specifications one more time. Now, in terms of power output, you said how much? It has either 12 kilowatt or 14 kilowatt of output. 12 or 14 kilowatts. And, and that's a function of the inverter or of the battery? Um, that is the function of the inverter. And then you can stack battery modules, typically 5.5 kilowatt hours modules, I think up to 27.5 or something. OK. And you said a, a typical home is going to use about 22 kilowatt hour storage? Yes, yeah, somewhere. Full house backup? Typically, what we see now is a change in the system sizes. So typically a German uh, household will use around, used to use around 10 kilowatt hours, but now the regulatory frameworks are shifting so that the feed-in tariff you get uh, typically is not paid during the sunniest hours of the day. I think it's something we've seen in California, we've seen in other markets. All the markets are drowning in solar power, which is good, um, but it also means that there's more and more regulatory pushes so that people do something more useful with their solar power than just inject it into the grid uh, all summer around noon. Um, so that's why in, uh, recently um, the, the German feed of tariff has changed. So basically you don't get any money during the sunniest hours of the day, during all the sunniest uh, months of the year. Um, so that actually shoots a hole into your calculations uh, if you don't get any feed in tariff. So what you need then is a larger battery and you need an intelligent battery which is able to store electricity every time that, uh, that the sun is uh, shining so much that the grid operator doesn't give you any feed-in tariff anymore. So that's why it's going up, and I think the typical system will typically be 20 kilowatt hours. 
makes sense. Uh, and by the way, folks, when we talk about feed-in tariff, in the, in the US we might call this a net metering credit, but it's what, what is the power company willing to pay you for any excess solar that you send back to the electric grid. But what, what Felix is saying here and what we've, we've covered before, especially in places like California, is that there's been so much solar coming onto the grid during peak production hours that the power company doesn't want any of it. They don't want to pay you anything for it. And so if you want to get the best payback on your investment, then you have to use battery storage. You have to be able to store that energy for your own use and then consume it at a time when it's advantageous for you. Now, Felix, you were telling me earlier that you're starting to see virtual power plant programs become more popular here in Germany. Can you explain a little bit about how does the virtual power plant program work here in Germany? Yeah, we are one of the pioneers or the pioneer for virtual power plants in Germany and actually worldwide. For American listeners, we also operate several virtual power plants in the US, uh, in Utah, in Texas. And it's been one of the key features which have been, has been requested from customers, but also from utilities. And the thing is, what we do is, uh, in Germany, the electricity market is liberalized. It's uh, very different from the American model, where you typically have these vertically integrated utilities. And in Germany, it's unbundled. So there's the grid operators, but there's markets for the power plants, there's markets for the suppliers, there's markets for the grid services, and there's money to be made if you have flexibility at hand. But these markets historically have been designed for large-scale power plants. And these large-scale power plants, of course, are much bigger. And so the markets are designed that you have to bring at least one megawatt to the table to play there. So, I would like to see everybody install a one megawatt storage facility in their basement, but it's going to take some time until that happens. So what you, if you want to play in these markets, what you need to do is you have to join others in a network of batteries, which is called a virtual power plant. And that virtual power plant, we then combine it into one unit, which acts as if it was a one megawatt storage facility. And it can provide all the services of, one megawatt storage facility could provide, and then we stack those on top of each other. And then we're able to enter certain markets, for example, for frequency st uh, stabilization, for grid decongestion, etc. And there's, um, and, and since there are markets, grid operators pay for these services to be provided by average household customers. And we then ch share the revenues with the customers. So that is the huge difference between a dumb battery and an intelligent battery. Great. Great. Today's video is brought to you by Solax. If you're looking for an all-in-one solar and energy management system, then you need to take a look at the new Solax ESS. Solax gives you total control of your home's energy system, incorporating solar power, whole house backup, intelligent load control, and energy management seamlessly integrated on a single platform. Solax uses a modular stackable architecture so the installation can be completed by only two technicians with no special lift equipment required. So if you'd like to learn more information, go directly to the Solax website or click the link in the description below so you can get in touch with an installer or a distributor right away. Now can you give us a, a simple example of how a virtual power plant program would pay the homeowner back? Like how quickly could a system like this pay for itself if the owner were to participate in the virtual power plant? Yeah. So what we do is called um, revenue stacking. So the, the key feature here is to stack the different ways batteries can generate revenues in different markets. So first and foremost, the biggest thing is, is still self-consumption. You do self-consumption uh, to be independent, especially in Germany during the summer months. But then on top, what do you do from November until February? From November to February, the sun doesn't shine in Germany. Your battery sits idle in your basement. So what can you do? Well, there's a program where the grid operator actually wants people to consume electricity at night rather than in the evening when everybody's plugging in their electric vehicle, you know, firing up their heat pumps, etc. So electricity at night is roughly half the price uh, than electricity during the day. And that's where we then use the battery, charge it at night, make sure that the electricity that, which they then use during winter times is half price. And the third thing we can do is actually enter these very elaborate markets for frequency stabilization. That means 
if the frequency of the grid dev it should be around 50 hertz all the time. In the US it's 60, 60 hertz, hertz yeah. so it should be 50 hertz in your area, but for us it's 50 hertz. It should be around 50 hertz all the time. And if it deviates in the one direction or the other too much, traditionally you would need power, other power plants, gas-fired power plants, to either ramp up or ramp down um, uh, to make sure the frequency stays stable. But batteries can do just the same. If you just take electricity off the grid or inject electricity into the grid, it has the same effect. They're just quicker, cheaper and better. Uh, and that's why we enter these markets and provide these services for grid operators. And then they pay, it's a market, um, and uh, so, we, we, um, so we get the price we, we uh, have to get in these markets. And then typically we pay the homeowners on top of their self-consumption benefits, on top of their cheap electricity at night benefits, we pay them another 120 euros every year just for this frequency stabilization which um, the battery is not used very much. It doesn't create a lot of extra cycles. It's just something the battery, it's just money the battery can make on the side. Right, right. Yep. Now, for those of you who've been following the channel for a while, you know that I've, I've been somewhat critical of virtual power plant programs because I know, I know many of you and myself included, the reason we look at solar and battery storage is we want secure emergency backup power for the home. Now, Felix, is it possible to override the virtual power plant? Let's say there's a storm coming through, or for whatever reason, I just want to make sure I have a fully charged battery for emergency purposes. Can I can I turn off the virtual power plant, or can I limit how much of the battery it's allowed to use? Yes, yes. That, that is, of course, something you have to offer. The, the, the self-consumption and the backup power is still the key feature for people. So um, what people can do in their batteries is typically define how much power should be reserved for these emergencies. Now, if you reserve too much, there's almost no point in uh, uh, joining a virtual power plant. But if your battery is large enough, you can reserve enough power for the backup situation and still have enough capacity for, uh, for uh, the virtual power plant. Um, if such an event happens, of course, the virtual power plant doesn't, doesn't operate anymore. If the grid is down, the virtual power plant doesn't have to do anything. So then you can, of course, fully recharge from your solar power in island mode. So typically these two things can go hand, to, uh, hand in hand together. And what we also do is we have a very elaborate um, algorithm which makes sure that we, the virtual power plant first and foremost chooses the batteries um, to act which have enough capacity left. So we don't, if, if we need to inject power into the grid, the algorithm looks around and looks like, okay, where are the fullest batteries? Okay, so, so it's not dumping first. all the batteries at once. No, we don't drain it. Okay. We don't drain it. That's, that's, what the customer doesn't want is the virtual power plant to interfere with the daily, day-to-day -day operations of the battery. So we have basically our algorithms are trained to make sure that we interfere as little as possible with the day-to-day -day operations. Great, great. And of course, now moving to a DC coupled solution, you can take advantage of the more efficient high voltage DC to DC solar to battery charging, right? exactly. which, which you don't have with an AC coupled battery. Exactly. When we entered the market uh, eight years ago with the first real mass market uh, system, that only had 3.3 kilowatts. Uh, of power and was still like the, f the flagship product in Germany. But what we can see now is that there's a huge demand for more power. And that has to do with the fact that, uh, that solar power needs to be injected much more flexible into the system. Like the system needs to be capable to, to store a lot of solar power because you don't get any money anymore under the feed-in tariff schemes around noon. So basically if you don't have enough power, and, and if you don't have an intelligent battery, you're gonna lose a lot of money. If you have a super intelligent battery, but you don't have enough power, then that doesn't help you either. So what you need is a lot of power and a lot of brain power as well. Um, and then you can actually make more money than under the old schemes. Makes sense, makes sense. Well, folks, this has been a chat with Felix Demski from Sonen. Uh, by the way, folks, Sonen is the number one AC coupled battery here in Germany by market share. And I know the Sonen Eco product has been out for over 10 or 12 years now, right? The, the original AC coupled Sonen Eco? 
And, and folks, a, a big part of the reason why we're here in Germany is because as the U.S. solar and storage market matures, you're going to see a lot of the international companies that are already operating in markets here like in Europe, where the, sto the storage market is much more developed uh, because, as Felix mentioned, the, the, the feed-in tariffs or the, the net metering credits that are offered by the utilities are much less, or in some cases, they're, they're not willing to pay you at all. And so that's when you're going to see more people adopting battery storage. So many of the companies that are operating here in Europe, you're going to start seeing these companies, brands like Sonin, in the U.S. in the next five to ten years, much, much more than you do now. Uh, and of course, that's why we're here, to give you the most up-to-date solar technology and product information. Well, Felix, I thank you for taking some more time and chatting with us. Anything else that the audience should know about Sonin or the new DC-coupled hybrid solution? Well, everything I've shown you uh, is for the German market, and that is because for the American market, we have our own system called the Sonnen Core, which is developed in Atlanta uh, specifically for the American market. Uh, so it's a completely different system suited for the American market. But what you also describe is that we see the same technical challenges in, these, in this phase of the energy transition all over the world. All over the world, uh, solar has been installed at a staggering rate because it is the cheapest form of electricity. And now we have this problem that we just have too much around noon. And all the systems try to adapt one way or the other. And you described it with California, we see it in Australia, we see it in Germany, we see it in Italy. Um, we need these new answers to these new questions. Um, and I think the key role will be played by the intelligence in the battery and the in deeper integration into the electricity market, where the price signals today tell you what the system needs and the systems then need to react to these price signals. And if they do, then the customer actually makes more money than ever before. So I think it's a very interesting dynamic and to see how it plays out in the different markets. And we're very glad to see it, A, in Germany, but also in the US and markets where we're present as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for joining us, Felix. Excellent right. information. Uh, folks, that pretty much does it for today's video. Um, as always, if you're getting good value from the videos you watch on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Um, also, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming out, it'll come up on your recommendations and you can stay up to date with everything. But I thank you all for spending some more time on the channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.